Oi oi! Today, in the northeast of England, it's minus two. Uh, I was due to go to a match today, South Shields and FC United, and it's been called off due to a frozen pitch. But what I am going to do is, I'm going to do a wee video on connections. And I'm here. Outside St James's Park in Newcastle, why I? So, what do I mean by connections? Well, everything I do, wherever my videos are, whether it's Korean or Dairy City or wherever it is, there's always connections. I love them. I love the connections, Irish League connections. So, today's connections are footballers doing my research. We're going to talk about the most famous footballers who have gone from the Irish League over to the northeast of England and vice versa. Now there's loads of them and I'll list you them off in a minute. There's some really big names and they're the ones I'm going to focus on but I'll run through a list of names of players who have sort of done that move and as I say we'll focus on the big names and tell their stories. I was on Twitter and I asked people on Twitter to give me names because people on there know a lot more than I do. I know f big names. Other people know the more obscure ones. So I'll read you through the list that I've compiled and I've missed out a few of them but anyway it's, it's quite a good list still. And then I'll focus on the main men. So here we go. Jackie Milburn. He's the most famous of them all. Newcastle's greatest player. They have a stand named after him and all sorts of stuff. He went from Newcastle to Linfield. Madness. Okay. Ian McFall went from Linfield to Newcastle. Michael O'Neill went from Corian to Newcastle. Paul Ferris didn't play Irish League but went from Lisburn Youth to Newcastle. Very recently, Trey Hume, or Trey Hume has gone from Linfield to Sunderland, he's playing first team football in the English Championship. Tommy Cassidy, he went from the Glens to Newcastle. Michael Ingram went from Cliftonville to Sunderland, or vice versa, I'm not sure. Uh, David Craig went from Comber, again, didn't play Irish League, but came from Irish youth football to Newcastle. Billy Bingham went from Glentorn to Sunderland. Norman Clark went from Balamina to Sunderland. Alberto Baldi plays for Porta Down at the minute. He's been in Middlesbrough, Porta Down. Middlesbrough, Porta Down, something like that there. He's back at Porta Down. Uh, Eric McMorty went from Dundella to Middlesbrough. Robbie Weir, Crusaders player, went from Larne to Sunderland. Tommy Wright went from Linfield to Newcastle. Eric Glenn went, Eric Glenn, Eric Ross went from the Glens to Newcastle. A Jimmy Hill, not Jimmy Hill with a chin. Another Jimmy Hill went from Linfield to Newcastle. William Kennedy Gibson, otherwise known as WK Gibson, went from Cliftonville to Sunderland. We have a boy, for, for, boy by the name of Arne Hughes. And he started youth football over here and he went to Newcastle and got through their academy. So there's some names here, serious names. Now, I'm going to tell her stories of the big ones. For this story, we're going to start with me and my aunt, as far as I'm concerned. I'm not a Newcastle fan, Sunderland fan, but Jackie Milburn. Jackie Milburn. I've written down a lot of stuff, I'm going to read off it. And we're going to get a wee bit of background on it. Here we go. John Edward Thompson Milburn, commonly known as Jackie, was born on the 11th of May in 1924. 
From 1943 to 1957, he played for Newcastle. He was an attacking player and he made 353 appearances for the Magpies and scored 177 goals. He had 13 caps for England. He is Newcastle's second highest goal scorer behind some fella, uh, Alan Shearer. And he's won three FA Cups. Alan Shearer hasn't won three FA Cups. So when he left Newcastle, he moved to Northern Ireland. He went to Linfield. So Newcastle's greatest players won three FA Cups. And then he goes to Linfield in Northern Ireland. So he moved to Linfield in 1957, became player manager. Back then, it wasn't uncommon for players to transfer from Irish League over to England and vice versa. The money wasn't the same as it is now. It's just a different ball game, different professionalism. So anyway, Jackie Milburn, in my opinion, is probably the biggest name to do this and be sort of successful. So that's my opinion. Some some others will have different ones. So anyway, let's go. Um, whilst Jackie Milburn was at the Blues, he won nine trophies, including the Irish League, the Irish Cup, and he was also top scorer in the 1958-59 season and the previous season, the 57-58. So there you go, Jackie Milburn. He's got a stand named after him. He's got a statue in Newcastle. Played and managed Linfield. It's mad. It's always mad. I'm outside Newcastle Stadium. I can't get into it. It's, it's like Fort Knox here. It's not like Irish League. You just walk in through a side gate. Me video away in here, like everything's locked up. There's tours going on. I try to get onto a tour, but the tours are they're all sold out. So anyway, we move on to a man called William McFall, commonly known as Ian. Ian McFall. Ian McFall was born on the first of October 1943 in a little town called Corian. Ian played for Linfield from 1961 to 1966 and then he got a transfer to Newcastle after he impressed in a friendly game. He played for Newcastle from 66 to 75 making 290 appearances and he got six international caps for Northern Ireland. He would have had more but there was a couple of other decent keepers back then. So he went on to become Newcastle's manager and was seen as the man who discovered none other than Paul Gascoigne. He was the man that brought Paul Gascoigne into the Newcastle first team. And we know how good the footballer Gazza was. So he also signed a fella called Michael O'Neill. And we're going to talk about him too, baby. So anyway... Ian left Newcastle in 1988. He was their manager, but he left them in 88. There's players being sold all over the place. And I think he resigned. But he had boys like, like Peter Beardsley and all playing for him. Like really good players. Chris Waddle was sold as well. Go and look on the internet to get more research on this. It's fascinating. Anyway, he left Newcastle in 1988. And in 1989... He became the manager of his hometown, Corian. So he didn't, now, unfortunately, he didn't have a successful spell at Corian. Um, but what he did do at Corian was he gave a young man a chance. He brought a young man into the first team called Paul Gaston. Gaggy. And Gaggy became one of Corian's greatest players in the last 50 years. Gaggy, a hometown boy. And similarly, Gaza, a hometown boy. We're both given their opportunities. Being McFall. Whenever I was younger, 
Ian McFall used to do the Irish FA coaching courses in the summer and like I actually remember it. Like, I remember one day and this always stands by me, it's maybe only 12 or 13 but Ian McFall was a goalkeeper and he was doing a wee bit of goalkeeping drills with us and he was throwing the ball up and I was catching the ball but I wasn't looking at the ball when I was catching it, he said what are you doing? I says what do you mean what I'm doing? He says I bet you play you like football I says I, he says I knew it because that's what they do he said, like, keep your eye on the ball, always watch the ball. You're playing Gaelic, you're that used to it. A second edge, you just catch the ball. Always remember that from him. At this point, I should say, I am freezing my hands. I can't even feel my hands. It's like minus two over here. So we're going to go on to the third Newcastle player that I've chosen to talk about. Now, there's more. Tommy Wright would be a good one, but I'm not going to do Tommy Wright. I'm going to do somebody who you might have heard of. Michael Andrew Martin O'Neill yes Michael O'Neill who's a Northern Ireland manager so Michael O'Neill played for Corian and transferred from Corian to Newcastle so I'll talk about I'll talk about Michael and then I'm going to leave Newcastle and I'm going to head down to Sunderland I'm going to talk about Sunderland and Middlesbrough connections I ain't going to Middlesbrough miles away so anyway Michael O'Neill born 5th of July 1969 played for Corian from 1984 to 1987 before Ian McFall signed him for Newcastle United Michael O'Neill started his career at Chimney Corner as a youth but he quickly moved on to Corian started in the reserves and he was brought to Corian by Bertie Peacock and Jim Platt. Now Jim Platt just happens to be another connection from a video which I'm going to talk about later on. So <coughs> O'Neill was playing for Corian in a UEFA Cup tie against Dundee United and that's when he first really became noticed. Dundee United tried to sign him but Newcastle came in and they got him first. Ian McFall with his connections probably swung it. Michael O'Neill made 48 appearances for the Geordies. He scored 15 goals. He was a midfield player. O'Neill returned to Northern Ireland at the end of his career and he also played for Torn. And again, he's a Northern Ireland manager for a second as well. Kind of a big deal. Anyway, next stop, Sunderland. <laughs> 